This season was funded by those amazing people who support us on Patreon. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing. Hello and welcome to Cancelled Movie Report, the documentary podcast series that talks about the best movies that Hollywood never made. My name is Michael Campbell, but you can go in camera. And joining me, as always, is actor and comedian, Mr. Eden. Greetings and salutations, Cambo. <laughs> oh, geez, that is fucking I'm fancy. trying on new hats, Cambo. I'm trying on new hats, mate. <laughs> well, we need to be a little bit fancier because we, we have do. a guest in. In fact, this man kicked down our door, chainsaw in hand, and demanded to come and talk about movies He's again. He's got my child. <laughs> Yes, he's a friend of the show. You've heard him on the show before, as well as his own podcast and his own detective series on the internet. It's Mr. Alexi Doliopoulos. Wow, it is, of course, my absolute honour to be here today. And yes, I did take this podcast by force. I needed to be on to discuss cinema. If I hear that there's podcasts going on where they're talking about movies, and sure, yours is talking about movies that don't exist... I still need to come on and freaking <laughs> put my freaking hat on, my little podcaster hat, and talk about movies with you guys. Now, Alexi, since last time we talked with you on this uh, podcast, you went and solved the internet's biggest mystery. <laughs> uh, do, do you want to maybe tell people a little bit about that project before we get into this one? Yes, this is true. I am a career detective. I am. I think I have to put it on my freaking my visa now when I travel overseas and I'm a detective. Uh, me and Cameron James, a very funny comedian, we solve mysteries in the realm of popular culture. Uh, we've been doing the Finding series for a few years now. We just made the jump to YouTube video style detective work uh, uh, with our friends at Auntie Donna. They produced us. They star in it. They do all the recreations. It's a show called Finding Jesus. And we did solve on the internet's biggest unsolved mysteries around a game called Kanye Quest 3030, uh, which is a weird Pokemon style game where you play as Kanye West. It was kind of popular like 10 years ago. And then, like years later, people started believing that this video game was a recruitment tool for a new age cult trying to get new members in. <laughs> so people have been trying to solve this mystery for freaking 10 years. And then we went in. And it turns out we're actually really good at solving mysteries and we were the only people ever to solve this mystery in the last decade. <laughs> well, then, if, if we're talking about solving mysteries, you're the right person because the mystery is why does the movie we're talking about today, why did it get as far as it did? Well, that's true. That's uh, very yes, true. Yes, we are talking about wow. a uh, version of Green Lantern that nearly happened that starred Jack Black. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Yes, Cambo, we are talking Green Lantern. Now, the mid-2000s, it was a strange time for superhero movies. Chris Evans was the Human Torch. Ben Affleck was Daredevil. The Nolan Batman trilogy was in full swing. Hugh Jackman was Wolverine, so some things don't change. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was a much simpler time without an interconnected MCU. Yeah? A time when you could just take a superhero and do whatever you wanted with them without impacting a multiverse of other content. So in 2006, Warner Brothers, they knew they had the gritty, dark superhero genre that locked up in Batman. They were like, that's great. But we want to capture another market. We want to go to a totally new genre, yeah? But we want to keep that superhero understanding. So they went to a writer, Robert Schmeagel. Now, uh, has anyone heard of Robert mm. Schmeagel? Oh, yeah. Yes? Uh, Good. Yes. He's one of my heroes. Re- I love Robert Schmeagel. Really? One of your heroes? Okay, this is great. I, he, I am yeah. more familiar, I guess, with his more f- most famous creation, I would yes, suggest. Yes, correct. Uh, which yeah. is, of course, mm. Triumph, the, the insult comic dog. Yes, from uh, best, best remembered from Conan yes. um, at the uh, Attack of the Clones premiere, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Yeah. Which is, I would say they're both my heroes, <laughs> Rob and Triumph. I love them both equally. But Robert Schmigel, he's probably one of the great sketch writers of all time. Yeah. Like he's a big SNL Huge guy, in SNL. big Sandler collaborator. Um, he's my favorite sketch of his on SNL is uh, set at a Euros shop. <laughs> Uh, where they keep on talking about you lacking the juice, like the the oil drippings from the heroes. <laughs> you lacking the juice. <laughs> I'm sure, just a I'm really sure there's some sketch, there's one it's... listener out there that knows knows that sketch that is losing their mind right now. <laughs> you like it a juice? Yeah, I like it a juice. One of my favorite sketches of all time. Well, 
uh, Alexi, I know that you're you're not necessarily like a huge superhero movie guy, mm. but are you a fan of horny two thousands comedy films? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you can see the video of me right now, but I do have a full size cardboard cutout of Adam Sandler <laughs> behind me that just sits in my office. Um, this is my era of comedies. I was a teenager. I love that kind of frat pack bullshit. I love like stoner comedies from this era. That mm. kind of like. Um, I call it gross out sentimental that was coming around. That is time, such like, a good bad, description. So that is such out. a good description of it. Yeah. yeah. So how did this marriage happen, Eden? So let me just let me just dive into it. So obviously for those that don't know Robert Schmiegel, um, some of the films that he did write was Hotel Transylvania one and two. Uh, he did the rewrites on Jack and Jill. Amazing that that, that mm-hmm. film wasn't a first draft. <laughs> that <got made. laughs> yeah, that's someone being like, I can polish this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you don't mess with the Zohan. Um, but yeah, we've talked about his voice as um, Triumph the Comedy Insult Dollars, as well as his many sketches um, at Saturday Night Live over the years. Um, and he's actually acted in quite a few of those Adam Sandler vehicles yeah. as well. Um, he was in Jack and Jill. Yeah. I pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Little Nicky Pixels. He also snuck his way into Punch Drunk Love. So oh, really? <laughs> he's mm-hmm. got one really nice acting credit yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> and I think he plays uh, Paul Rudd's best friend in This Is 40. He's yes, he does. Yes, he does. As well. Yep, yep. Yeah. correct, correct. Um, now, the, the concept of this, at its barest, if you strip it all back, it's the thought is, what if the wrong guy got the Green Lantern ring? Mm. Surely that is ripe for parody because you could get someone making all crazy constructs and things like that. So there is, there is a nugget of a comedy film in there that's like, cool, this is, this, this is a funny idea. But let's have a bit of a chat about the cast. Yeah, now, who would that wrong guy be? So I think when we talk wrong guys, yeah. um, we didn't go he's – not, he's not Hal Jordan, okay? Yeah. He's not. We're, we're following Judd Plato. Right. Yeah, played by the one and only Jack Black. <laughs> nice. Now, Jack Black, Robert was told to write this for Jack Black. So this sound, this script sounds like Jack Black. Yeah, okay. Um, there's a lot of that throughout the whole script. Um, they actually went to Jack and asked him whether he wanted to do a superhero film. He said no. Um, but once he read Rob's script, he got turned around completely. Now, that is a quote from Rob himself. Yeah. <laughs> so whether that holds that much water, right. that he turned um, Jack Black around. But Jack Black, hot off the heels of School of Rock. Everyone loved him. So this seems like a good pairing. Um, no one else was cast. No one else was approached. No other characters were talked yeah, about. Yeah. So it didn't get that we far. Really, we just knew that Jack Black was who they wanted to play Judd, the new yep. Green Lantern in this, and they wanted to make it a a Jack Black comedy. A Jack Black vehicle. Yes, yeah, big right. time. Well, we don't do a lot of comedies here at Cancel Movie Report, mm-hmm. and this may be the reason why we don't. Yeah. Because <laughs> a comedy needs a good script. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is what I want to know. This is what I think the crux of this needs to be. And in fact, you might notice this episode is structured a little bit differently. Uh, like our Elf 2 Christmas special yes. we put out, comedy scripts don't have that much meat to them. Yeah. So we thought this is actually better served as one bigger episode rather than really trying to stretch it out over two. What I want to solve is this has a reputation online. Mm. And that reputation is it's a stinker. Yeah. It's it's Whoa. it's bad. Like people hated this so much when it leaked online. But we'll get to that at the end. Yeah, yeah. and I just want to know, I think that we should we like to prove things right or wrong. People thought Justice League Mortal was good. Yep. We disagree. <laughs> we, we, we think it was quite bad. <laughs> so this has the opposite reputation of everyone dunks on this script so much. So we need to know, is it as bad as its reputation? For me as a comedy nerd back in the day, hearing about this movie, I was always like, wow, this is like a holy grail for me. <laughs> and I was like, wow, I can't wait to see what this is. It's got a few of my favorite guys all involved trying to imagine what it could even be like, especially because like... You know, at that time, superhero genre was still kind of like, not new, Mm. but it was trying to figure out like what it was. Like you've got all the Raimi Spider-Man movies, which are like almost like body horror with like comedic niceness stuff around it. But then the one that always sticks out to me that I guess I always imagined this would kind of be like was, do you guys know the movie Mystery Men? Oh, yeah. 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 Definitely. That movie is so bizarre to me (laughs) because it's like a parody of superhero genre when not even like X-Men is out. Yeah. Like, I don't even know what it's parody because it feels like it's an X-Men parody, but it comes out around the same time as X-Men. So it's like, what the fuck can an audience get from that movie? And I always felt this would be similar to that, but more 
I don't know, Robert Smeagol, I think, is so funny. So I thought it would be fucking hilarious. And uh, let's just do a poll. Lowbrow, highbrow humor. Where where are you thinking this sits on that spectrum of will it be kind of classy mm. comedy and uh, maybe a <laughs> satire of the superhero genre? Or will it be kind of crass? <laughs> <laughs> well, my guess uh, is knowing I don't know as much about Green Lantern. I don't know much, but I do know he has like a ring that he wears mm -hmm. that um you can basically wish it to turn into any kind of like e energy a construct. They call it a shape. construct. A construct. Mm. Yes, and I imagine at some point in time, um, Jack Black will turn that construct, the energy that comes out of his ring, into my guess. And I'm just guessing from what I know about the people involved, probably a giant dick <laughs> the, that he will hit people with. <laughs> right. we, That's a guess that I'm putting out. Well, there. that is a great guess, and we will touch on that throughout this uh, this report. But oh, let's Lord, get don't be, hey. <laughs> mate. This is it's 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 going to be a, a wild ride. I'll tell you that. Um, let's get into it though. We open in space, much like a Star Wars with that. Uh, overarching shot with the skyline going past. Mm. Voiceover hits us. Order was formed at the dawn of creation. It is the structure of social organization. Creation gave rise to sentient life forms whose sense of logic and reason were flawed. Thus was the need for an intergalactic order keeper recognized. And the Greenland Corps formed. Now this is a very serious opening mm. setting. This tone they're setting is very serious. Um, mm. Will this be the tone of the entire movie? I hope so. <laughs> I love a comedy fake out like this. It's just something that gets me excited. Because like someone will fart or something, and then yeah. it will have that like uh, that doom, 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 doom kind of music. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, mm -hmm. uh, I'll tell you the switcher right here. Cut to a cat spilling a litter tray yeah, all over great. the floor, <laughs> and wow. our hero Judd Plato enters the room. And he trips over ah! one. So we've already got a prep for. Oh, this is one back. of my favourite wow. tropes: is the two thousands comedy that you see the the morning routine of the loser character. Yeah, this yeah, is they, very. They've much... got bills on their table that aren't paid. They're scratching their balls yeah, and while they, they're brushing their they feet, they step on their toast falls on the ground. Yeah, they step yeah, on yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 actually that. Yeah. Um, now. He's described as a 30-something slovenly fellow. Okay. And I, I do love the word wow. slovenly. I, I don't hear it enough, so that's great. Wow, wow, wow. Um, and he's appear, he appears constantly hungover. Yeah. Right. So we're really hitting that Jack, Jack Black. I um, like when films it. are written for an actor, but they don't want to too specifically describe them. <laughs> <laughs> but clearly they are trying to describe them. Yeah, very much I get so. vibes yeah. of that. Portly fat man child, <laughs> love rock and roll, dress like rock and roll. He does a fly kick, kick in the <laughs> air as he enters the scene. He says skadoosh. <laughs> Played by Ryan Gosling. Yeah. <laughs> so... Judd has one thing going for him. He's currently a contestant on a reality TV show, a fear factor type show called The Dare Diner. Yes, uh, where you eat gross stuff. Right. So he's got a bit of uh, popularity going on there. His best mate, Seth, who's described as a comic book nerd and also just in, in brackets, frail. Okay, so right. they're putting that out there. Wow. Um, he's also very impressed by everything Judd does. Clearly, looks up to him. So these are our two our two main okay, characters: Judd and Seth. Judd and Seth. By the way, I know you're, you're just going. Yeah, we're going for the Apatow thing. Judd Tell, Apatow, Seth right Rogen. Yeah. Those are the names that we're using. That's exactly I, I what also comes get uh, from from the little snippets I've seen of this script. I, I get vibes of maybe even a Seth Green. Whoa! Oh yeah, yeah that yeah. kind of like like dweeby yeah, nerdy yeah. kind of character. Oh, wait, what was yeah. Seth Green doing around this time? Rat race? Was that yeah, like? yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, wow. I think you nailed it exactly <laughs> what he was doing at this time. We now cut back and forth between our spacecraft mm -hmm. in space with an alien. It's being piloted by Aben Sir, mm -hmm. which is a Green Lantern. Um, he's piloting, hurtling through space. Um, we cut between that and the knockabout Judd working his dead end job at an IKEA like store. It's not called IKEA, it's mm. an IKEA like store, mm. um, where he moves stock and he's helplessly in love with his work manager, Connie. Hmm? Um, we then see Aben, it's his ship blasts out of the atmosphere and crashes into the desert. We look at the wreckage, Aben is dying, and we zoom in on the green ring on his finger. Um, as he, they, she, I'm not sure what pronoun Aben has, he's um, yeah, guy, uh, lays dying in the crashed craft, he sets his ring to find a replacement. 
The ring then shoots off his finger and travels around the entire world. It goes past brave doctors and nurses, a legless mountaineer climbing up a mountain, and a soldier's um, sort of fighting in the in the in the desert. So it's looking for someone without fear. But I, I'll just say this in the script: the ring is actually stopping and looking these people up and down <laughs> right, okay. as it flies around. Okay. So it's like that's it's awesome. Like goes up to them as a look and then, and then scoots off. Cut to the ring passing a local sports bar. Yeah, yeah. where Judd and a group of his friends are watching Judd's latest episode of The Dare Diner, and he's eating a pig anus. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> the host excitingly exclaims, "This Judd fella, he's got no fear." Okay. <laughs> you wow, can see where this okay. is going. Wow. Okay. The ring, the ring, like nods. Yeah, he likes that. Yeah. Nods yeah. in agreement. <laughs> it's so weird. So that's the yeah. That's the the that's the test entire of no fear <laughs> is that he ate a pig anus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. it overheard someone saying, "This guy's got no fear." No notes so far. Um, yeah. Then suddenly, Judd is overcome with a sudden urge to exit the bar. He doesn't know why. He's compelled to go to his car. Suddenly, he can hear Judd Avon's Blade. voice in his head. A green energy blast encapsulates his car. It lifts it off the ground and it's flown through the air all the way back to Aben's crashed ship. Now, on the way, I just will note this, on the way back, it exits a parking garage and the green light then turns into a giant hand and pays the attendant with a giant green $10 note. <laughs> but when the hand goes, yeah, does the note awesome. just disappear? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. So we've now got Judd. He's still he's still in the car, and he's um, heading towards the crash site. Okay, I like this, but I still need to know what the fuck. Chaos is rampant. Order is maintained. The battery is the source. I don't think you answered my question. The core is the knowledge. The battery. The power. Ah, answer my question! I said what? Suddenly, the car starts falling from the sky. The car lands with a thud right next to Avon Sir's crash spaceship. Judd crawls out of the car. He spots the spaceship. What? Wield the power. Maintain order. Oh, here we go. Okay, I'm gone. I have a bar full of admirers. I have a cat with a hyperthyroid. Judd turns away, only to be confronted with a 30-foot-high green projection of Aben Sir's face. It is a great honour. Hi? A responsibility that transcends your mortal bounds. Okay. Now where the hell are you? Just listen to me! Get back here, man. These girls are gonna leave. The two of them are totally passable. What did we take the other day? What day? How much NyQuil did I take? What? Not that much. You just fell asleep. Can this shit have a delayed reaction? What are you squealing about? It was a week ago. This is a power greater than your finite mind can imagine. I gotta go. Okay, I'm back. This is about the survival of entire races. Of worlds and cultures you've not dreamed of. The projection suddenly disappears. Uh, hello? Head? Okie doke. Well, you'll be missed. Suddenly, a green ray shoots under Judd that forms a green chair under him. Seatbelts strap around his shoulders. He goes flying towards the spaceship. He lands on the ground, just across from Aben Sir. Sober. Be vigilant. You're one of us now. I am Aben Sir. I have served the Corps in the Space Sector 2814. I am dying. Wow, that sucks. You have been chosen to be my successor. Nope. The ring has decided. Not happening. Your wants are not my concern. The ring must be charged at the battery of power at regular intervals. Call for it, and it will appear. Wait a minute. That costume. This is this is the green guy. Green Hornet. Green Lantern. Lantern. Wait. 
You're saying I'm a Green Lantern? Stop it. That's mind-blowing. This is like the eighth most famous superhero. The Guardians have chosen you through the ring. The ring singled you out for your fearlessness and honesty. No, 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 no. Are, are, you, are you talking about the Dare Diner? I don't even win. I, I finish third. I mean, that's a secret, but you're dying. So I don't think the network will... The ring knows your potential. To overcome fear. But I can only eat that stuff because I have a dead spot on my tongue. I bit a section off when I was five. I was at the carnival riding the teacups, and I already had a sugar buzz from the fry. Please, do not bore me in my final minutes. Fear is, for you, an intellectual exercise. It is a method of self-preservation linked to your species survival instinct. Sorry. You believe this thing works out here? Verizon. You're an asshole. You blow the semi-pretty girls for me, and now I don't have a ride home. I'm a Green Lantern. We have a very tiny window here of getting sex while you're on TV. Maybe you're happy spanking it to Corinne, but you're what? I'm a Green Lantern. Set! I swear on Corrine's ass. They pulled me out of the bar with this green light thingy, and now I'm in the desert with a dying guy right here who's making me the next Green Lantern! Cut the bullshit! No bullshit. You're a Green Lantern? Come on, that's like the ninth most important superhero. Put the guy on. What? Put the dying guy on. I don't believe you. Do you mind? He doesn't believe me. Hello? I am Aven, sir. Okay, who is this? Cooper? How do I know this isn't a goof? I... Uh, I haven't much time. Say something sciencey. The ring must be charged at the Battery of Power. Once every one of your planetary revolutions. 24 hours, everybody knows that. Okay, Seth? I think you're pissing him off. Sorry, Seth's way into the superhero stuff. Loser. Come on, tell me something I can't read in the comic book. A green ray shoots from the ring, pulling Seth through the phone and into the ship crash site. Through the phone's earpiece. Call for the battery. And it will appear. Sure. <laughs> will do. Sorry. I'm sorry. He's sorry, okay? So... How's this? Why don't we just forget this ever happened? I'm obviously not the guy, and you... Aben? You're liking this. You're mulling. Letting it marinate. He's ruminating. He's dying. I think I know when my man Aben is... Aben's body starts to decompose and form dust. <coughs> What's wrong with you? You're supposed to be brave. You ate a coyote. That's my dead spot. On my tongue. I told him. The ring flies off Aben's hand and lands on Judd's ring finger. A green lantern suit materializes all over Judd's body. <laughs> I'm sorry. Seriously. You're going to be great. <laughs> well, there we go. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, wow, what, are, what are we thinking? Oh, wow. Let me tell you this. I love comedies of this era because they immediately date yeah. themselves. We've got Fear Factor <laughs> as a reference. Yeah. <laughs> it's, and then also, the other thing that makes it like, I don't think you would have seen in the final draft of the film. Who knows if you would have, if it would have been on screen. But um, it feels like such like a working out in a script phages thing to have Green Lantern exist in the universe as a superhero people know about. Yeah. Yeah. Then is also a real thing. And it's like, I feel like at some point down the line, producers, execs are going like, you have to pick what is this? Like, what's going yes. on here? What is the meta textual space that we're playing with? I feel like they really casually established an entire superhero universe. Yes. Just by him being like, oh, you're like the sixth most, seventh most popular and superhero. It's, and it's, mm -hmm. it, it is literally 
and they mentioned Spider Man in it and stuff like that. So it's yeah. they Green Hornet, Green Hornet yeah. and stuff. So there's something they haven't quite thought this through. Yeah, I think my fear is that just listening to that, I think like like I would say comedies of the early 2000s, this probably hasn't dated very well. <laughs> In mm. as far oh. as oh yeah, okay. I know, I know, I know what you're referencing. Kareen's mm. butt and yeah, things like that, yeah. like all that sort of. Stuff. I think he, at, the, at the start, um, we didn't have it there, but he calls. He's like, "Hey, I'm at this bar. I'm surrounded in bubbly jubblies yeah. and stuff like that." And wow. and he's Seth. <laughs> Seth, his friend, says the girls are totally passable. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So there's wow. there's going to be a Let's bit of that. Let's just say Shallow Howe has not learned his lesson <laughs> quite yet about objectification. <laughs> Correct. Another weird thing that I would notice as well, like this is like what 2005, 2006, 2006 yeah. we're yeah. talking. I think there's another thing that this being more of a comedy than a superhero parody has become apparent uh, because as around this time and as a superhero genre develops further, especially with MCU. Usually the first thing we're meeting is the villain. And we mm. see like the villain backstory yeah. as kind of setting up the world that we're about to go in, the problem that's going to happen. And then we cut to the everyday life of our schlubby guy. This one, I got no idea what the villain's going to be. I have zero clue. Is it going to be the Joe Rogan Fear Factor host? Is going to be the bad <laughs> guy? Who knows? I think good, Maybe I think, we haven't been met to the villain. I think good taste is the villain. <laughs> <of this. laughs> They're fighting against it at yeah. all opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, so this is this is where we're at. Okay, so Judd, he's a Green Lantern now. Yeah. Um, he's got his ring on. So we cut to him trying out different constructs, yeah, the green force that he shoots out of his ring. So he flies around getting used to the ring. Seth makes fun of him and says that uh, all Green Lanterns they do in every fight is just create giant fists. And he goes, you can do other stuff. So he tries a few other things. He makes nunchucks and stuff. Seth tells him to try something really complex, you know, and unique. So Judd concentrates really hard and he eventually creates something. I'm just going to throw this out to you guys. What do you think he creates in this moment? You would theorize the green dick, Alexi. Do you, do you, mm. Are you going to stick <laughs> yeah. with big green dick or are you going to change stick your Stick with the dick? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm, I am thinking now perhaps it's like a little almost a callback. Like he's eating a pig anus in the first scene. Could it be the the, the the resurgence of the pig anus, which I'm imagining is an asshole with a curly tail? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna go with horny. It's something horny. Horny. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm. Well, I'll tell you because I think boobly jubilees. Don't, <laughs> I don't think you would have guessed this. It is a sexy green. Oh yeah, Britney Spears. Oh okay. Oh my god. <laughs> So he creates, You're kind of close, Gamble. What the hell? He creates a sexy green Britney Spears in brackets in a short skirt. <sighs> is in the script. Wow. Wow. Oh, okay. Wow. So we this is where word, we're hitting. We need to have okay. words with Robert, I think. This is, where, this is where we're hitting at the moment. <laughs> right. This is from the writer of Jack and Jill. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay. Yes. Interesting. I know. I know. <laughs> so Judd flies home. Uh -huh. He's towing his car behind him using his Wait, pounds. what does he do with this Britney Spears, by the way? Oh, um, nothing. She just sort of moves she around and then dis 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 okay. disappears. Okay, yeah. Hit me, she baby, one more says, time. Hit me, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> she says that kind of thing. <laughs> You're a toxic man. <laughs> it would be funny, though, if Britney Spears accompanied them for the entire film at this <laughs> yeah, point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Judd flies home, towing his car behind him with his green um, uh, projection. Yep. Seth is in the driving seat. And at one point, Judd has to make a green construct of a urinal so Seth can pee out the car door into it. So this Great. is the sort okay. of stuff that he's making. Now I'm looking forward to all the things they use the green constructs for. They've <laughs> oh, done sexy yeah. Britney Spears. There's they've a, done urinals. There's a lot. There's okay. a lot. And I hate to admit it, but I must confess, to me, that's fucking really funny. <laughs> <laughs> the urinal one's really funny to me. I love it. Oh, yeah. uh, you're going to get a lot out of this. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Literal so toilet humour. <laughs> Love it. Um, so the next morning, Seth wakes up to see Judd leaving for the day in the Green Lantern costume. But he tells Judd, you can't let anyone see you as the Green Lantern. Mm -hmm. Judd's annoyed because he wants to have fun and use his powers to his advantage and stuff like that. But Seth tells him that people know who he is. They could attack like Seth or Connie and stuff classic. like that. This yeah. is classic superhero rule stuff. Yeah. So he's referencing all that stuff. Um, and they, he reluctantly agrees. Judd... 
cut to Judd at the office. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Judd is cleaning Connie's office and uh, he secretly eradicates all the mice in there because she's like, I've got these mice around. Um, so he uses his ring to eradicate the mice. Any guesses on what he creates to eradicate the mice? Mouse traps, lots of mouse yeah, traps. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking, but that seems too obvious now that you've stated it like this. Yeah, yeah, mm. that would be the normal human thing to do. Wow, okay. Maybe tiny Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> this is you're getting so much closer. He creates a whole bunch of green cats. Yeah, yeah. I did wonder so what it was going to be. He's creating okay, a bunch yeah. of green cats, but I'll I'll add this to it. He also make now. This is probably one of the weirdest sentences I've had to say. No. He also Wait, just to be clear, you once described Arnold Schwarzenegger flexing out of a donkey carcass. Correct. I did. But this is up there. This is right up there. Okay. Okay. He now <clears throat> he now makes. A fat green cat in overalls to plaster up a hole in the wall. <laughs> then he adds to the comedy by making the cat have a plumber's crack. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and I think this is way, this has to be way more inventive than the Ryan Reynolds one, right? This, like the Ryan Reynolds one's not doing this shit. He, used, he did a Hot Wheels car once, I think, Ryan Reynolds. He used a like, Hot Wheels track. Yeah. 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 This, that, is, that is genuinely bizarre. What I would love mm-hmm. to see is how badly it would have been CGI animated in 2006. I'm thinking, as well. I'm thinking Garfield movie vibes. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. that as well. Massively, yeah. massively. But the thing is, he doesn't, it's so weird because. A normal Green Lantern would create like a, a, a plaster like thing and d- do it using the power and like yeah. do the plaster on the wall himself. It wouldn't create a fat cat to dress up as a mm. plumber why, to do the plaster. Why a cat? Thing. Why not a plaster? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so we then cut to him finishing that up. Connie is very impressed that Judd got rid of all the mice and he fixed her off a soap. Wow. He's getting Very good vibes impressed. from him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Seth picks up Judd from work and they're caught in a traffic jam where they spot a bunch of looters on the highway. Mm. Yeah. So Judd, Judd looks at Seth and Seth's like, go on, do it. Suit up. So he suits up. Um, Judd then stops these looters. Now, I'm going to keep doing this throughout the whole thing because this yeah. is a fun game. But what do you think mm-hmm. he creates to, to stop these looters in their tracks? Big net on a stick is what Oh, I like a butterfly say. net? Yeah, okay, like a butterfly Yeah, that's net, good. Yeah. Think cruder. A oh, big, a big dick. Okay, you're you're in the wheelhouse <laughs> with a big dick. Wow. You are a hundred percent in the okay. wheelhouse. So, what could capture something to do with a big dick? Oh, oh my god, is it like a is big it... condom? Oh. Ding 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 ding. <laughs> Whoa, my god! Does, does, does he create the packet that he opens and pulls <laughs> out, or is it? He creates a giant condom to oh. trap them. Yeah, uh, yeah, Alexi's face is. Yeah, well, <laughs> wow. So far, oh can God. I just say, I have no notes on this. Rick. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm waiting. People said this was terrible. But I'm waiting for the. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. I reckon it's comic book nerds that found the script, not comedy nerds. Yes. And they're like, ew, how dare they desecrate my hero, the Green <laughs> well, Lantern? And us, we're just like, this is gold. <laughs> this is beautiful. Can I say something else that I've noticed? It was so big in films like this that uh, I would say. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons is an example of not doing this, which is they're mm-hmm. making fun of the fandom that like this. Yep. So Seth yes. is a comic book nerd, and Judd's always saying like this fucking nerd over here, like comic books. <laughs> yeah. What a loser! Whereas like the new Dungeons and Dragons movie was very much celebrating people that like Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this was very much like if you like comic books, fuck you. Well, that was one of the criticisms of the yeah. Ghostbusters reboot. You yeah, know, they yeah. made the baddie like a nerdy like yeah. guy that was into... A fan of Ghostbusters, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so we've got our giant condom. That's been ticked off the list. Right. Um, then he, he... So he's got them all trapped. All the onlookers are looking at him like, what are you, what are you doing creating giant condoms? Um, but suddenly, out of nowhere, someone starts attacking Judd with yellow lightning. Shit! Judd darts out into the sky and immediately pulls out his phone. Yeah? Who is this guy? I have no idea. He's an asshole! I know. I can't get my ring stuff to work. It's the yellow thing. What? The bolts are yellow. Your ring has no power against anything yellow. No one told me that! Yeah, the dying guy told us. You weren't paying attention. I was too paying attention and he didn't- Well, everybody knows that. It has to do with an impurity in the universe back when the Guardians- Yeah, whatever, Spock. What do I do now? Go invisible. Huh? Go invisible. That way the guy can't see you or hit you. That's good. Judd concentrates with the ring and becomes invisible. However, the cell phone is still in his hand. Okay. Ah! Who's the cell phone? 
How will we talk? One problem at a time. Judd throws the phone. The alien looks for him. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a green laser gun materializes behind the alien, shooting and incinerating him. Yo! I is a badass! Judd reappears on the roof where the alien had just stood, doing an obnoxious dance. Take it back to Mars, bitch! Using my house! Anybody got my phone? Judd sends out a green ray that scans the area before scooping up his cell phone. Nice job! Not supposed to kill things. Not? It's not good for the kids. You put them in a jail cell or a capsule, you let the authorities handle it. The guy was a dick! I'm just saying, that's why the people are a little weirded out. They are? I thought they were just, you know, stupefied. It's okay. You're a superhero. You're setting an example. You'll learn and they'll love you. Wait! I'm supposed to be at my folks already. Tonight's dinner at home. Okay, change and I'll wait for you. Hey, are you going to fix those holes? Yeah, yeah. He creates an army of cats to fix the <laughs> holes. <laughs> Does anyone, I, I, I'm not quite sure, but the, a big part of the Green Lantern mythos is this colour yeah. breakdown of yeah. like yellow hurts green yeah. and there's, right. yeah. Well, same with Spock. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly, yeah, exactly. In reds, like rage and anger and stuff like that. Yeah. So that 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 will play into it uh, okay. later on as well. Colors so, uh, yeah, are yeah. very important. specifically yellow. Is there is there is there kryptonite? kryptonite yeah. Pretty much, yeah. So we've got we've got Judd saving the day, sort of, but he did kill someone, so that's learning, not great. Learning to be a learning superhero. learning the ropes. Um, now he does head off to his parents' house, and look, it's just one of those classic parents thing. He's got a brother that's an overachiever, yeah. and he's looked down on. Um, so he gets he gets no respect at <laughs> Why dinner. Why can't you be more like Dan? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. exactly. Oh, wow. This is perfect mid-2000s comedy shit. I love it. So he now stops a robbery at Circle K, and a crowd gathers as the two men fly off together. Judd wants to fly past uh, Corinne's house, yeah. but on the way, the ring starts to run out of power and they start falling. Now, they're falling pretty quickly, yeah. and Seth's like, quick, make something soft to land on. Uh-oh. What do we think? We, uh, a big butt. Okay. A big butt. Yeah. I was going to say a big boobly. Oh, <laughs> big, yeah. some See, lebbly, lebbly, lebbly. That, is, that is a great guess. That's what I thought. No, this takes a left turn. He actually creates a giant green race car bed. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's that thing where they, they don't want to get too ahead of the of the audience. They don't want the audience knowing what's going to happen, yeah. so they've done a little bit of a left turn. They here, did it for us. We all thought it was going to be boobs and I butts. think boobs is probably a better idea <laughs> for this I'll, film. I'll, this is where he's kind of lost me. I think race car beds is, <laughs> yeah. is hack. I'm yeah. not into it. So that might be the only thing. The race car thing might be the only thing they took from the Green Lantern movie in 2011. That's true. He, did he, make he a creates race a race car. car. Yeah. He does create a race car. Oh, and, and a terrible script. And a terrible script. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's the two things they took from this. Yeah. Um, back at Judd's apartment, Judd and Seth recharge the ring. They discuss Spider-Man, and with great power comes great responsibility. And Seth is concerned that Judd's not taking it seriously enough by making silly constructs. In this world, is is Spider-Man a real superhero, or is he a comic book? No, he's a, he's he's like the Sam Raimi. So he's a fictional character okay. in this world? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. yeah. Okay. That's confusing. I know, it's yes. very confusing. So- <laughs> I often go like, well, if in the DC world, Marvel comic books exist, mm-hmm. in a Marvel world, DC comic books exist, but in this one, it's like, oh, it, they both exist because Green yeah. Lantern's a comic book character that they're aware of. Yeah, and Spider-Man they're aware of, so it's it's all all bets are off at this point. Do you reckon they go into like image comics? Does Spawn get a shout out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. So Spawn is real in this world, unfortunately. <laughs> He's the only other superhero. Yeah. He pops up at the end, everyone's like, thanks for your help, Spawn. Spawn. <laughs> um, in this moment, um, when he mentions silly constructs, uh, Judd then makes another green hot babe. Yes. He's described as sick. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sick. So that's yes. great. That's really cool. Now we're going to cut to Planet Oa, which is obviously the, the Green Lantern's home world. Obviously, yes. Obviously, yes. yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the other Green Lanterns, um, everyone is watching Judd uh, they're unimpressed by his actions they debate if they should take away his powers but then they decide to give him a chance to prove himself after all not all Green Lanterns are heroes at first they have to grow into it mm, foreshadowing uh, at work Judd overhears uh, Corinne and a workmate talking about dating Corinne wants a man who's important not a loser like most of the people that work here <laughs> oh. um, Judd then has a think about what he can do to, to look important I reckon I know what he's going to do okay so he, you, you think he might like look 
for someone to save and try and impress and stuff like that. Yeah, but yeah, that was my thought, yeah. You know what I wouldn't do? Mm. I wouldn't put someone in grave danger to then save them. Oh, yeah, but that's what I thought he might try. Yeah, yeah so yeah. He, he pushes a window washer <laughs> off his building. Okay. I love this. Yeah, like... <laughs> So goes in funny. video, goes in, goes invisible, yeah. and just pushes him off the building, and he starts falling to his death. Oh, good. Yeah, that's good. So then he flies out and saves him at the last minute. Mm-hmm. Everyone goes crazy, um, and this then he flies the guy. He's holding the guy, Superman esque, and he flies past uh, Corinne's window. Yeah, and she's like, "Oh my god, who's this guy?" Um, and it works. She's really impressed. Um, who's did, that window washer? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What a hunk. <laughs> they go on a date, and as they arrive back at her house, he kisses her. But they're interrupted by someone. So he goes on a date as Greenland. Yes, as Greenland. So she likes Greenland at this point. Not that loser, that other loser. Um, They're interrupted by uh, someone called Telly Teg. Yes, Uh, a man in a suit with an oversized bald head. He interrupts them and he takes Judd off world for some more training. He explains to Judd, Judd is a target of the Tektik, which is this uh, ancient race of sort of insect-like. I think it's. Tech techie. Tech techie. Okay, good. Tech techie. Well, they all coalesce into one thing that's referred to as legion. Yeah. Oh, right. So they're hive mind. They're like a hive mind. Yeah. Um, they seek the uh, the Green Lanterns to find their way to Oa and destroy it. Yeah, because they want revenge because they've been trapped on their home world by the, the Green Lanterns for, for thousands of years. Judd rejects this and he says, no, I'm not getting involved in this. Um, and he shoes, shoes him away and he heads back um, to Corinne's apartment. Corinne asks if he wants to go inside. But Judd, he's sort of a bit annoyed that she only wants to talk to Green Latin and not Judd. So she, he's a bit annoyed and he leaves. So now he's sitting with Seth and he's talking about how, how do I get her to like Judd and not Green Latin? To cheer himself up. Now this is where it, this gets slightly rapey. Uh-oh. Um, so what he does now, wow. he creates a green construct oh, no. of her no. and gets her to give him a lap dance. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess um, this is crazy. This is- <laughs> I guess this is crazy. <laughs> This show was fun while it lasted, but we cannot continue this show anymore. we got to shut wow. it all down. Yeah, it's getting, uh, yeah. It's getting into that, wow. that that space. I would also say lap dance is something that doesn't exist very much in the culture anymore. But in the 2000s, lap dance, uh, sponge bath, <laughs> these are all like <laughs> yeah, comedic yes. terms yeah. that just don't exist anymore. It's so true. It's weird. It's Oh, it's super fucking weird. Yeah. Uh, you know that comment I made earlier about this not aging well? Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you think that's true? I think that comment has aged well. Yeah, well, ironically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, suddenly, during this lap dance, Judd dematerializes. Yeah? He's suddenly taken to Oa. So they've summoned him all there, and there's four green lanterns around him from all other parts of the universe. Ow, what the-, the Guardians have summoned you. You are on the planet Oa. I am Toma Ray of the planet Zudar. I'm Salak. Green Lantern of Sligia and Sector 1418. So I'm not the only Green Lantern? Don't you know anything? Of course not. This planet perspires ignorance. Yes, there are thousands of Green Lanterns. This is Sinestro of the planet Korugar and Sector 1417. The most orderly sector in the universe. Let us move forward to the book. Judd follows the other lands as they make their way to a high-tech domed yellow building. I'm loving this place. So futury. Quiet. No one speaks here but the book. Order will not be compromised. What's the book? Oh, mama! He and the others stand in front of a giant green hard-covered book. In these revered pages lies all the knowledge of the Guardians. Our rings will translate its text into words you know. Watch and learn. In sector 407, at the parting of the greater megalonic clouds, a small planet, Ch-ch-ch, orbits a brown dwarf star. The Chiki were a sentient and highly technological species. Like most hive societies, they were relentlessly expansionist, first conquering the planet, then blazing a trail of destruction and plunder across the galaxies. The Guardians knew the reason was impossible, and that strategic... As the book narrates the alien race's history, the Judd is losing interest. Do not Coming distracted. Are you getting all of this? What? Yeah, yeah, the 
The Chi-Chi's. They went to the Green Lantern Corps. His intent is pure. Yes. His desire is compromised by distinct functional deficiencies. We made preparations for this circumstance. Observe. Oh, hey there, Judd. Hey. We're your little puppet pal. How are you doing? <laughs> and we're going to break down the whole situation here. It's complicated. Hey, I was getting the book. And it goes like... On a planet far around a big brown star lived a species called the Tipsy Kids. They were like big and but they wore no pants. So the species called the Tipsy Kids. But they weren't kids and still stay in their hives. So they conquered the planet. No, 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 no. Then they took their crusade and saw overdrive. It was time, time to, to stop the Tipsy Kids. Guys, sound no good to me. Oh my goodness. Then what? Well, then what happened? The guardians wanted to kill them because genocide is not allowed. Oh, whoa. No genocide. So the Green Land Corps drove them back to Titic and sealed it in an energy, energy cloud. cloud. Now they can't escape because the closed terrain of the species called. Really fun! I assume you have questions. We will answer as we are able. Well, like I said, I loved it! You are part of a greater continuum, spanning galaxies and millennia. You are merely one of thousands committed to defending the forces of justice and order. Oh. You may inquire further. Well, okay, I have to ask. Have you ever tried to eat his hair? Quiet! You must not understand. Our rings see the Chikchiki on a rampage of power. They are seeking green lanterns to direct them to Oa. Wait, you mean those ants on TV? They didn't look anything like the yellow Martian guy who shot at me. It was an alien, not a Martian. His form may have been different, but the Guardians reveal only what we are meant to know. Ooh! ooh. Our sector and Oa might be under siege. Every green lantern must be prepared. Salak. His will is manifest. It is merely clouded by the culture of ignorance run rampant on his planet. Yeah, what he said. You will benefit from one of our most highly regarded instructors. Cool. Where is he? Up and at him, loser. I'm Kilowog, and you're my meat. Bring it on! Wah, wah. Okay. There we go. Whoa. So, now, there's a whole puppet scene. Yeah, look, we've done a lot of films, but that song is the best thing we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. One, congratulations, beautiful production on you guys. But also, I think it is so funny to do the entire backstory of the history of this universe as like a kind of chintzy, crappy puppet show, it would piss so many people <laughs> off yes. that like, love Green Lantern, mm. that idolised Green Lantern growing up to see that is so funny. And I will also admit another thing I love in like fantasy type stuff is all the specific language where like, I'm Sling Lord from Klinglos Clock. Yeah. I'm like, I think that stuff's so funny to me. I don't know. <laughs> I just think when they do it like that, it just kills me. I love it. Well, it's because I'm pretty sure Robert has a background. He's done some things with puppets as well. Well, I mean, Triumph is a puppet. Well, yeah, but I'm meaning more, I'm meaning more like Muppet, Muppet <laughs> stuff. I, I hate to break to you, but Triumph is a puppet. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's very realistic, of course. So he wanted to he wanted to get that in there. I yeah, think. He okay. definitely wanted to. Yeah. Are they supposed to be like Henson-esque puppets or yes. are they crappy puppets? No, it's like Henson-esque. Like Henson, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, 
We're into a training montage. We all love a good montage. And they had got Kilowog. I know Kil- Kilowog's a big pig one. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So he's he's a classic one. Um, he's training by Kilowog. We see a big montage, um, and he slowly gets better and better. Um, he's not pulling like logs or anything like that, but he is learning how to make better constructs. Um, he's being beaten slowly, but then he managed to conjure up better and better green powers. And at one point. To help him, this is probably the peak of this fight. He creates something to help him in this battle. I would bet a billion dollars that you could not guess what he creates to help him in this fight. Uh, now I'm trying really to think outside of the box. <laughs> yeah. Really. Oh yeah. Actually, take that box and throw that box <laughs> as far away as you possibly can. Is it a humanoid? It is a humanoid. Okay. It's part of a humanoid. <laughs> oh, okay. Top half or um, bottom half? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you 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 will never you will never get this in a million years. So I'm going to give it to you guys. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's right. He creates Sharon Stone's cross legs oh, no. from Basic Instinct. Oh, no. <laughs> wow! <laughs> to wrap around <laughs> Kilowog's head. Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. This, how do you even think of that? Wow. I mean, I mean, I mean, Basic Instinct was on the TV while he was writing. It's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is a cultural reference for a guy making his bones as a comedy writer in the 1990s. Yeah. I reckon it's top of mind for a yeah. guy like that. But even in 2006, that's fucking dated as hell. Yeah, that's happening right wow. now. Okay, so... Cut to Judd's had his training. He's lying awake, asking Kilowog if he gets to go home soon. Kilowog deduces that he must have a girl at home, and he tells Judd he's got to leave this girl behind because he himself had a girl, uh, but Green Lanterns, you've got to give them up. You've got to make sacrifices. Judd asks simply to see her one last time. Cut to Judd and Kilowog. We're now on Earth, and Judd is introducing him to Seth. He leaves Kilowog there as he goes, um, dressed as the Green Lantern, on a date with Kryn. The date goes badly. Um, because he spends the entire time trying to uh, impress Corinne by referencing Judd about how cool Judd is right, and how okay, awesome yeah. he is. Um, and he's like, oh, look at him on the TV show, and he keeps trying to turn it over. Seeing Judd like, eat, I think at this point he eats a live snake mm-hmm. on the TV show. Okay. Um, and she's like, this is really disgusting. So it doesn't doesn't really work out. Uh, but she really likes Green Lantern, and he's sort of he's a bit knocked down by that. Um, Judd then dematerializes again, and he's suddenly he's back on Oa. Mm. So he's just had a quick day. Now the ring um, is ordered to show the log from its crash that he had at the start of the film. Um, we see the, it, sort of the green mist materialise and it shows the action of Aben's last moments. A creature known as Legion was hunting Aben. So they believe so Legion is a collective of the Tiktikai, yeah. Yeah, the ants people. So they've all coalesced together in sort of a hive mind, this big yellow alien amassed into one form. That's kind of what we got in the Green Lantern movie that we, big yellow cloud. Did we get Hector Hammond's giant forehead? We've got that too. Yeah, okay, good. Avon puts up a good fight, but he and he refuses to show him where the Owa is, um, and he dies. Now, Judd realises this is pretty serious if this person is coming after me. Um, so Sinestro and Tom Array um, tell him that they brought him back to Oa because the Legion has been tracking him. They show images of what could happen to Earth if Legion got there. Images of Seth being tortured, Crin's house blowing up, the furniture store being raided by aliens. Um, Sinestro tells Judd he will show him order and train him. So now we've sort of introduced Sinestro, yeah. who people that know the comic, he's a big part of the of the law. He actually becomes, yeah, um, yeah, he yeah. starts off as a Green Lantern, but then he becomes, becomes a villain. Right? Becomes yeah. a villain. Yeah. yeah. So can, can I just say at this point, there's no way that the Tick Ticky are the villains. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, like okay, absolutely yeah. no way. <laughs> they're, they're, they've set them up too specifically Agreed, to be the three, villains. Yeah. Um, so now Sinestro shows him. His own worlds, because all the Green Lanterns look after their own worlds. So Sinestro shows him his own worlds, and he's brought order to them. Sinestro takes Jug on a tour of the most civilized planets, but Sinestro doesn't realize that the people that live there are really scared of him, and they only oh, do it right. over like fear. And um, they visit Earth again, so Sinestro can show Jud how to lead. But uh, they find Seth has been kidnapped by Legion. Uh, Jud follows the ring to find out where they've taken him, and it leads him back to the furniture store where he works. Seth is being held over the side of the roof by a yellow-winged alien, and he asks where the Green Lantern is. Sinestro and Judd uh, then start fighting him. 
They start losing the fight, but a drunk killer wog comes back at the last minute, and in the script it says it's he saves their asses. Drunk killer wog. Yeah, he's drunk. Okay. He weighs on Earth. That's sort of a thing that goes on. They keep cutting back to him. He's drinking and getting drunk. Oh, a so lot Earth, Earth culture is like corrupting he's, him. Yeah, he's like corrupting him. Yeah, yeah. Um, Seth is now safe, but it's it's been a bit of a, a, a cluster. Let's go. we got to wrap our brains around stopping those yellow things. You'll do nothing of the kind. Sinestro removes Judd's ring and uniform. Hey, what? Until I hash this out with the Guardians, your planet is not safe with you as Green Lantern. They will trace your whereabouts and destroy everything in their path. Not just this jellyfish you insist on endangering. Hey, you can't just take his ring. Kilowog, toss all the furniture you please, but leave the tactical maneuvering to me. For now, this planet is under my auspices. When do I get it back? When the Guardians deem it appropriate. If they deem it appropriate. Sinistro flies away. He's gonna sell me out, isn't he? Don't worry, rookie. I got the perfect move. You ever been to snuggeries over on Dearborn? They got two for one shots after seven. It'll be great for you. Uh huh. Okay, bud, you need to get off this planet. No way! Kilowog, dude, I love you. This planet is a bad influence. We're going to Snuggeries. I'm fine. Buddy, it's called the Snuggery, and you're going home. You're hurting yourself. All right. I'll miss you. Thanks, Poozer. Kilowog flies away. A little bit wonky. Wanna rent some porn? See you around. Wow. Well, there's another thing that dates it, renting porn. Yeah, yeah. Um... It's like that, um, what you were saying before, Alexi, the, the forced sentimentality, like they just put this bit in like, hey, man, you've got a drinking mm-hmm. problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. hey, you got to look after it. Yeah. It's so weird. It's, uh, I, I still, I'm trying to wrap my head around it now that we've entered an actual superhero movie. That's what I'm kind of it's struggling tr- with it's now. It's transition now. Really... There's a baddie and a villain and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Mm, it's really quite strange because it just does not feel like, the same movie anymore i think that's kind of what people must have been grappling reading these scripts i don't know if that was the only thing is <laughs> <laughs> yeah true <laughs> one of the many things people are grappling with so now we're right we're right in the meat of everything now so sinestro is now in front of the the council of the guardians and he asked them to he wants to take over earth to make it a model planet yeah he says uh he's got a strip judd of his powers for the greater good and the guardians say yep that's fine yeah um, Judd is now back at his family dinner and he actually tells them that he's a Green Lantern, but because he doesn't have his ring, he can't do anything and they just think he's crazy. And then they still say, why can't you be more like your brother? Um, Sinestro returns to Earth and he looks around in disgust and we see a montage of terrible things happening around the planet. We see, This is what it lists that we see. We see a toxic waste dump. We see riots. We see chain-smoking Japanese people. Okay. That's very, okay. very uh, specific. And then it just shows a shot of Flavor Flav. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. okay. okay. Very 2006 Flavor of Love, big uh, TV show. Uh, <laughs> like, this is this is stra- that's a strange. I, I like to imagine re- reference. This this was made, and then everyone's sitting in the theater watching it, and Flavor Flav is watching it in theater, and he pops up. He's like, like what? Guys, what did I do? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you told me it was for something else. <laughs> uh, so now uh, Sinestro creates a giant microphone mm. up in the atmosphere and he starts speaking to the entire planet. Um, he says he is now in control. Seth calls Judd to see if he's hearing this. Seth tells him that Judd needs his ring back, but he can get it back because it's all about willpower and belief. Yeah? No one can just take that away from you. People are now rioting in the streets. And we we see a shot of Flavor Flav freaking out, saying, "Damn!" (laughs) Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. So the uh, the Pluto family. We cut to the Pluto family at their. They own a pharmacy. We cut to a pharmacy, and it's being robbed and looted. So Judd's family all rocks up to try and protect their store, 
Judd starts. <laughs> Judd tries to fight off the robbers, um, but he's being beaten to a pulp. He's being smashed. Um, he's not going well, but he keeps getting back up like a superhero would, even without powers. He then grabs a. Now this is probably the weirdest fight scene. Uh, we've dealt with more, wow. more weird, weirder than the big condom. Yeah, more weird than that because he grabs a <laughs> bottle of preparation H, he then okay. drinks the entire thing, <laughs> and he proceeds to start <laughs> vomiting on all the robbers <laughs> while he chases them out of the store. Oh, shit, yeah, <laughs> that rocks. That's, that is new. Even that, the other that is kind of crazy. I've never seen that before. New. Yeah, this is that true. is new. Mm. Now. The, all these guys run out being puked at by Judd, and Judd's dad looks at him and he says, well, that was brave. <laughs> and, of course, what happens then? The ring magically reappears oh. on his finger because he's found his wow. inner braveness. Yes, his suit appears and his family cannot believe it. He travels up to confront Sinestro. Dangerous times call for necessary restrictions. I am but one man, but I will do my very best to keep track of all your interpersonal communications. Ah! No! Plato, what are you doing? You're out of control, Sinzi. Your will far exceeds your intellect. I'm restoring control. Look, man, maybe I can't handle this either. I'll give you that. But you're like 20 Nixons. I'm calling in the other Green Lanterns. What? Send them back. We don't need more disordered minds with chaotic methods. I'm not chaotic, Jack. Whatever you do, don't think of Elmo titty-wanking Barbara Walters. What? <laughs> Damn it! Let the weak mind step aside. Weak! Ah, enough! You're not even a Green Lantern. This is my ring. <laughs> Do you really believe that? That the noble Abensur's ring would choose you on its own accord? What are you babbling? I've had my eye on this planet for years. The very life forms, the vegetation, the easily molded masses of simpletons. What the fuck, Sinestro? When Arben's ring contacted me for help, that was the opening. I cancelled his signal. Then, when his ring sought a successor, it was simply a matter of will to redirect it to miss a courageous test pilot and choose an impetuous, weak-minded fool. That's right, Judzi. You were a mistake. I should bring you before the Guardians for this insubordination. But even they have lost their sight of the need for order. <laughs> Look how they made me waste time on you. I want it. I want it. There we, so there's a little twist there. So the ring didn't actually choose Judd Sinestro yeah. in, intervened yeah, yeah. and made it chess. And we always say that we love a villain monologue. monologue. This is the first one, I think, I'll have to mm -hmm. check, that involves uh, Elmo Titty fucking Barbara Walters, I think. Are you sure? I think you need to check that. Yeah, I think you I'll, need to go I'll over check out back yeah, catalog yeah, just to make sure. Could, but, yeah, this could. could be a first. Wow. And rest yeah. in peace to Barbara Walters, by the way. <laughs> the time since this came out, she did pass away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll do a little in memoriam thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I did enjoy that they just, they got a little bit political. Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> Called yeah. him, what, 20 Nixons? 20 Nixons out of the blue. Uh, yeah, because one Nixon isn't bad enough, but 20 Nixons. Yeah. It's, yeah. Who at that time was the worst president they'd had. At that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that time. That's right. George W. Bush was in power during the, yeah. the making yeah. of this movie, so he's not too crush on either. Yeah. <laughs> now, so we're, we're coming to this big climactic sort of battle between the two of them. Um, so Judd summons all his will and he fires his ring straight into Sinestro's face. Now Judd summons a savage green version of Sinestro, so like a Hulk version of Sinestro, okay. um, who proceeds to beat Sinestro up. Um, big fight breaks out. 
uh, the rest of the Green Lanterns rock up. Killawog rocks up. And they all help uh, Judd subdue Sinestro. They chase him and they fire all their green beams at him, right? Now, Killawog throws Sinestro into a farming silo. And what's in the farming silo? Yellow grain. Oh. Yeah, so that starts oh. sapping his power. And Genius. not only that, just as he's about to get up, all a bunch of yellow baby chickens come out <gasps> and start eating the grain off him and walking over him. So he's being beaten by little baby yellow chickens. Oh, how embarrassing. This is great. I think that's actually the chickens got me. The grain, I'm like, okay. <laughs> the chickens got me. The chickens, I think that's genius. The little chickens walking I, I, all over I like him. to think he he finally gets the chickens off him, stands up, and then slips on a yellow banana peel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Sinestro is beaten. The color yellow has saved the day. Um, and we cut back to Flavor Flav saying, damn, again. <laughs> oh, yeah, wow, wow. good. Um, he had a busy one day on set. Yeah, he? it was yeah. a busy one day. <laughs> um, people are all cheering. Judd, as he flies out over them, um, everyone's happy. He flies back to his parents' house, and they're so proud of him. But he says that in order to protect them, he has to erase their memories. So even though they'll think he's uh, he's lazy and stuff again, so he, he erases all their memories with a ring. That's something the ring can do. Um, the Guardians witness this, and they nod this selfless act approvingly. They, they like that he's done that. Um, Judd is walking down stand with the rest of the Guardians. They're going to get some drinks. Um, but then one of them gets a distress call. So we're still, we're oh, still, okay. still things happening oh right God. now because Legion oh, is... are attacking now. Oh. So Whoa. we've now gone back to Legion. So Legion are attacking Sinestro's sector. Now Sinestro yeah, is yeah, like yeah. locked up. Um, so we cut to Sinestro's control planet. Legion lands there and he's looking for Green Lanterns. The planet then cheers saying, are you, gonna, are you here to kill Sinestro? Great, we hate him. And Legion's like, oh, what? I, I didn't. Understand so there's this miscommunication little yeah, what, what okay. are you talking about? So then they go, Okay, fine. Um, I'll let you let you guys be. I'm really gonna attack Earth now. So then he takes the planet, the whole planet, he dives inside the planet and pulses with energy, right? And he turns the planet yeah. into a giant asteroid and it starts heading across to okay. Earth. Yeah? So then the rest of the Green Lanterns they see a giant spike and they go, Oh no. Something's heading oh, this he's way. He's turned the planet into an asteroid. He's turned the planet into an asteroid and it's making its way there. So he's like, okay, this is what they... Oh, and I'm imagining now they have like a little um, screen with yeah, the okay. with a little outline of what the asteroid looks like. Yep. Yeah? Yeah. What's a giant yellow thing, do you think, that could make its way in an asteroid form? Oh, a giant, giant yellow... Y- like a big Skittle or an M&M, a peanut M&M? More detailed than that. More detailed. Is it like an object or is it like a, like a thing it's or a, a thi- person? It's a thing. It's a thing. It's, it's a technically thing. an animal. How of its time? It's yellow. It's super is yellow. Is it Pikachu? Nailed it. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, where did you pull that from? Wow. Ten points well, to Alexis. I was trying to think of yellow animals. I'm like, well, yellow doesn't exactly exist on <laughs> much real animals. And then my brain immediately went Pikachu. Yeah. Pikachu. And 2006, Pokemon's mm-hmm. still riding yeah, high. That's pride. So, he Legion has turned this planet into a giant Pikachu shaped asteroid okay. and it's heading its way to Earth. <laughs> Fuck this, hell, man. This is your climax right here. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, there's one more twist in the tail right now that gets even crazier. Whoa. So, Pikachu's tail has got a few twists in the tail. <laughs> 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 This is why we have him on, ladies and gentlemen, we go. for a quick wit like that. <laughs> Comedy podcast. Yeah, love One it. One of the wittiest men in the game. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the Green Lanterns and Judd are in space and they're seeing this giant um, thing hurtling towards them. Um, it's it's too late. The, the things, they're in trouble. What, yeah. what can they possibly do? Family and children, <laughs> they cut to the family and children on the street. They're all looking up. They want to see the giant Pikachu. So they're all in the street being like, oh, my God, it's Pikachu. That actually is really funny. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, yeah. And it's like, no, their doom is coming. Now, Judd knows what he's going to do. So he flies off towards uh, past the giant ball of yellow death. He concentrates more than he's ever done in his entire life. And what he does is he pushes Earth out of the way of <laughs> okay. the Pikachu a- a- asteroid. So he doesn't move the Pikachu asteroid. He moves Earth. He moves Earth instead. Yeah. So it's like, okay. Okay. That, And then you think, does, congratulations. Does this cause all kinds of havoc? Well, I'm glad you brought that up because, yes, 
It 100% does. Yeah. Um, so every all the other Green Lanterns yell like, no, yeah. what have you done? And then a sequence of shots showing natural disasters across the entire planet. So everything is being destroyed. Basically, the planet's being totally destroyed. Judd has messed wow. up big time. Um, Green Lanterns all look at Judd. There's nothing they can do now. Like, hundreds of millions of people have just died. Judd says, well, can't we just do something like reverse time? They look at him. They go, no, idiot. We're not Superman. This gives Judd an idea. So what do you think he does, gentlemen? Oh, does he does he Superman reverse around the planet? Not only that, he, he creates a green Superman. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> Christopher and Reeves? He tells them, yes, he tells them. He tells Superman, he goes, hey, Superman. And Superman goes, oh, what do you need me to do? And he goes, he, he says this, just like in Superman 1, <laughs> can you fly around the Earth to reverse time? Wow. wow. What is it's, this world? I don't no, I don't know. So he then spins spins faster and faster and faster. The world goes back yeah. in time. Yeah. Everything gets reversed. Pikachu asteroid reverses back out. It's still coming towards them. Judd then goes like, thanks, Superman. He covers himself in green energy and he tells all the other Guardians to shoot their energy into him and he becomes a giant green ball, ball and he flies straight into the asteroid, smashing it, and it blows up, leaving just Judd behind. He looks straight down the camera and he says, you're welcome. <laughs> end credits. Oh, really? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so during the end credits, it's one of those things. Oh, yeah. The, little, you know the, 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 the box, little box. You know in the 2000, there was the yeah. comedy box. Mm. So the comedy box is overlaid with the, the trial of Sinestro. Mm-hmm. And he's How found do they guilty. write that into the script, by the way? Do they go insert comedy box while credits roll? Or? It, says, it says end credits, which is overlaid. With Sinestro's trial in a comedy box. <laughs> wow. Robert knows his stuff. This isn't his first radio. I didn't and know so- it was called a comedy box. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, this is an educational podcast. It's many uh, things, Alexi. It's many things. It's, so it'll be that, you know, and that's the classic thing. That yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. he's found guilty and he's sent off to the prison in like the... Chaos, Question on comedy chaos, box. So, yep. Do people prefer one comedy box to stay or do they prefer when it jumps it, around it, and the credits have to keep moving? It jumps around, right. the credits then go on this side. Oh, you love a jump around comedy box. Yes. When you see the credits, like the comedy box disappears yeah. and the credits start leaving the left-hand side yeah. and then you're like, damn, the comedy's <laughs> over. But then you see, whoa, the oh, credits wait, are all the way on the right-hand right right side. The comedy <laughs> box. Like, okay, we're getting another box here. <laughs> the movie and the fun continues. <laughs> and then it keeps going and there's more comedy. Then it has them it has all the green lanterns having dinner on a planet and yeah. one of the crazy aliens he's with is eating a uh, a pig anus. Oh, okay, and, thank God and it Judd, came back. It came back and Judd looks at Judd looks at this female alien and he's like, huh? And she's like, huh? Yeah. Um and then there's just more there's more little comedy nuggets through the whole thing. Um and then at the very last thing is Sinestro in his prison saying, I will return for some revenge. For the bit, sequel. Bit of sequel bait yeah. there. <laughs> ladies wow. and gentlemen. That's how and, the uh, Green Lantern oh, movie ended, right? With Sinestro being like, I'll be back for the sequel. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. So that oh. is it, gentlemen. That is Green Lantern, Robert Schmeagel, 2006 with Jack Black. What are our thoughts? I think it's, firstly, it's insane that a Green Lantern movie ever got made after this because, <laughs> to me, it's, it, it, when the actual Green Lantern movie comes out, it's only, like, within the next four years or something after this it, one, yes, right? Yes, well, it is. Yeah, it's 2011. Okay, I've now just thought of this, thanks to your point, Alexi. Imagine you're the studio and you read this, and then mm-hmm. you read the one that got made. You're like, "Oh, thank God! Yeah, make this one." Oh yeah, this thank one's so God. much better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. wow. to me, it's, it, I'm hearing this and go, "Like, I don't dislike this. Like, it's probably to me, I like it more than a lot of other superhero movies that I've actually seen." <laughs> but uh, I can't imagine it ever getting made. And then I can't <laughs> imagine them going like, "Well, we Green Land, There's still some juice in this. We can still make one." If you read this, I go, "There's." I cannot imagine another fucking movie ever being made, <laughs> especially one as boring as the other one. <laughs> yeah, I know. So what happened? So literally, this is what happened. So the idea and concept it actually leaked at Warner Brothers, mm-hmm. yeah, and the a bunch of the scripts like got out into the world. Yeah, um, it. So basically. It got out there that they were going to do a Greenland without Hal Jordan and instead the ring malfunctions and goes to a reality TV star played by Jack Black. This actually led to diehard Green Lantern fans hitting the internet in a revolt. Yeah. They reportedly, they put everyone on blast and the backlash for Warner Brothers was so extreme 
that this was this was one of the main reasons why the project got killed. Um, it, wow. Basically, they had to go, okay, we've got to course correct. Everyone is absolutely smashing us at the moment. So I pulled some of the quotes that I oh, found yeah, great. Okay. Um, from some of the, um, the comment sections. Jack Black playing Green Lantern would be a crime against humanity. Jack Black as Green Lantern has to be the most fucked up thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> oh my Why does God. DC like to torment its fans? <laughs> Are DC's fans <laughs> masochists or is the DC team just plain stupid? I have to say, both. this sounds like a mistake. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, you know. So wow. there was a lot of people fired up there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, this is really in that ain't it cool news yeah. and era yes, of yes. like stuff. And it sounds yep. so much like um, all like that homophobic backlash that mm. like the Schumacher Batman films got. And yes. uh, I would even say the Ghostbusters uh, twenty like answer the call. Yeah, twenty sixteen. Yeah, 16, 16, Ghostbusters yeah. movie. Yep. It's all that same kind of like um nerd rage that yes. uh, Ain't It Cool News really fostered in like going at the studios for this kind of stuff. Um, so he said um he met with Jack Black and the producer. Jack gave a long list of directors of like these are the people I want to work with. Um. And it just sort of petered out after that because Warner Brothers got all this hate and sort of yeah. pulled back. But what's interesting, they never actually told Robert. Uh -huh. So it was that classic thing that he goes, I never got a phone call or anything. People just stopped talking about it. And that's sort of how Hollywood works. Just wow. disappears. No, one, no one sort of was like, yeah, massively ghosted. Um, and as far as Jack Black, well, he said, look, it just wasn't meant to be. Um, and this was just when the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern was coming out. And he goes, uh, will you will you go and see that one? And he said, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we insightful. never we never knew yeah. whether Jack Black was going to see the uh, Ryan Reynolds uh, Alexa, you're good at solving mysteries. I'm saying get Cam, call up Auntie Donna, new Ooh. series. Did Jack Black <laughs> yeah. ever see Green Lantern? <laughs> <laughs> if I ever do meet Jack Black, that'll be my Oh, first please ask him. Please ask him. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, now, we always ask this question at the end. Mm. This, this film, would it have been any good? Do I, we want to see this film get made? I think we have to split this between will it have been good or will, do we want to see it? Okay. Mm. Yep. Okay. Would it have been Good. good. No, no. I think we're all no. in. A, uh, well, yeah. I think we're all in agreement. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it would have moments. It would be kind of funny, but I, I don't know. It, it feels like it's late on arrival. Maybe the second drafts were better, but I don't know. Yeah. Do I want to see it? Fuck yeah! <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Well, we have come to the end of our movie report for Jack Black's Green Lantern Project. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we would love it for you to subscribe, be it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or wherever you like to listen. That really helps us get discovered in the charts. It would also be terrific if you could leave us a five-star review. That really helps us get discovered too. In fact, Eden... Do you have a five-star review that you can read out to us as an example? Yes, Cambo, I have one right here. So much fun, five stars. I feel like I can be immersed into a cancelled movie culture. Oh, wow. great. <laughs> so that's, it's probably... <laughs> I love that immersion. I love the immersion. <laughs> this is some cancelled fun. Um, that's from Gone Fish Caking at Apple Podcasts in the United States. Oh, so great. thank you very much, Gone Fish Caking. This movie very much, it got cancelled production wise but it sounds like it may have been cancelled in a different respect had it actually come out <laughs> yeah exactly and if you do want to support us even more than leaving a review then come join our Patreon we have a bunch of bonus stuff over there inclu including a whole bonus podcast called Casting Calls that's a lot of fun did we miss anything uh, we'd love to hear from you you can always let us know via cancelledmovies at gmail.com or at cancelledmovies on all of the socials and if you have a project you want us to cover let us know. There's a link in the episode notes and you can alert us to a project. We may just give it a cancelled movie report treatment. Alexi, thank you so much for coming and joining us. You can untie us from these chairs now and, and let us go. <laughs> but we hope you enjoyed let, your time. Let my child back out. <laughs> yes. oh, the child has been freed. Don't worry. Yes. Don't worry. The arms have been put down. Uh, but my pleasure. I love doing this podcast. I love this show. You guys fucking make such great stuff. Thank you for having me back on. Love Thanks, it. Thanks, man. And where can people find you? Uh, I guess I'm on, on the socials, usually at This Is Alexi. I'm on Letterboxd. That's probably where I am most often. Uh, on social media uh, and you can watch Finding Jesus on YouTube it's on the Grasshouse YouTube page 
can listen to Finding Drago, Finding Desperado on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Same with Total Reboot. And uh, in the near future, there'll be more stuff from Cameron and I and some more movie podcasting from me later on this year, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, I'm always making shit. And we love it. Exciting. Well, I'm Michael Campbell. I've hosted and edited this episode. And Ethan Porter, who was my co-host too. Cheerio, Cambo. And we both produced the show. But before we go, we need to give a huge shout out to our amazing voice oh, cast, ooh. which included Brock Baker as Judd, Jay Zeta as Seth, David Sheftil as Sinestro, and Michael Hahn as Kilowog. Make sure you're listening next week because we're talking about a Sylvester Stallone magnum opus that never was. Isobar. Oh, yeah. But if you want a little sneak peek, here's a clip. Look, do you really want to tell the passengers that there's a monster on board that can shrivel them up until they look like a giant raisin? Hey, you're right. That's pretty unbelievable bullshit. Definitely your specialty. I'll make the announcement. You'll do the briefing. But until then, take care.